Hi, in today's video we have something kind of interesting. This is a Newtone IMA3303 and this is a fairly late production model. It probably was manufactured sometime in 2006 or maybe 2007. It's one of the very last production runs that they had of this model. And this unit was sent in by Andrea in Menlo Park, California and she has a rather unusual problem. Uh, when she contacted me originally she said that she's having a problem with the radio turn turning on randomly at different times even though she had the timer feature turned off and the problem started three or four months ago and it became more and more frequent as time went on. So I helped walk her through the basic troubleshooting of isolating the master station from the terminal board and therefore all of the wiring to the remote speakers and the remote speakers themselves and even at that point when it was just the master station powered by its two transformers and connected to an antenna, it still would do it. So it's obviously a fault in the master station and she sent it in to me so I could have to take a look at it and see if I can repair it for her. So I have it set up here on the bench. I'm gonna work on it this afternoon and all I have connected to it at this point is I have it connected to my bench power transformers and I have it connected to an ANFN Newtone antenna and let me show you what it does when I switch the power on. Let me go ahead and turn this down. So you can see that as soon as power is applied, the display shows IC, which is the display readout for when someone's using the remote radio control function and of course it switches the radio on to AM. It won't tune to any stations. The scan or the manual tune won't work. You can't turn the program off or switch between the other inputs. It's just permanently locked into an IC mode. The intercom doesn't function either. So it's for all intents and purposes just jammed up. This is rather unusual on a 3303. I've seen this happen on a lot of 4406s. In those cases, we always suspect a microcontroller problem first because that's typically on a 4406 what it will be. On a 3303, I think I've only seen this problem once before. And since this came from California, lightning is not really an issue. What you're looking at here is the main, or what we would call the audio, main audio amplifier board from an IMA 3303. Same vintage as Andrea's set. This board has been partially disassembled. The heat sink for the output transistors is gone the tuning module is gone as are some of the other components but the reason I wanted to show you this is I'm going to predict what the problem with her set may be and then I'm going to work on it and see if I'm right or not so I'm going to zoom in a little bit and right here what we're looking at are two control switches for, that are used in the remote music control functions of an IMA3303. This little switch right here is the remote power on and off switch, and this one is the remote tuning switch. And when these are in the on positions, it enables the remote power on and off function. And when this switch is in the on position, it allows you to do remote tuning or remote um, scroll scrolling through your AM and FM preset stations. They gave you these so you can have some control over those features in your installation. And for instance, if these are both in the on position now, if I move the power switch to off, you'll no longer be able to turn the radio on and off from remote stations. And if I turn the tuning switch to off, you'll no longer be able to scan or scroll through your preset AM and FM radio stations. So what I suspect in looking at the schematic for this board and the way the 3303 is designed, down here, there are two diodes here that are part of the circuit that incorporate the switches. And I have a feeling that in Andrea's set, one of, or perhaps both of these diodes have failed and it's causing a short in the circuit and that's why it's self-activating. So now I'm gonna take her set apart, take a look at it and see. Okay, some time has passed and now you can see that Andrea's IMA3303 works correctly. It's been powered up on the bench for about 10 minutes now. The time shows we can turn the radio on. And I've already 
already checked both AM and FM, the auxiliary input. I've connected some uh, inside remote speakers and a door speaker to it, and the intercom function works correctly, as does the remote radio control. So the question here is, was it the two little diodes that I thought it was going to be? The answer was, of course, no, it wasn't. It would never have been that simple. That's only something I've seen one other time before. Since it wasn't the diodes, which was something that only took me about 30 seconds to check, as I started to work on the main board, what was the problem likely to be? Well, the first rule in good troubleshooting, when you have a problem that's not a common problem that you don't see all the time, and you say, aha, I know what that's going to be, the very first thing that you do is you check and measure voltages throughout the piece of equipment that you're working on. So the very first step I did was I began at the beginning of the power supply, and I started to measure voltages through the power supply to see what I would find. What I found was voltages that were consistently low throughout the entire set. The next step at that point was to begin to remove or isolate the furthest sections of the set from the power supply in the uh, thought that maybe there was some circuitry in some part of the set that was pulling down the voltage of the power supplies and that was affecting how the master station was operating. So as I began to sort of peel off one section after the next, I didn't find a great amount of difference in the voltages that I had measured originally. So it looked to me like it was a more fundamental problem with the power supply in the very first sections of the power supply. So is this a common problem on 3303s? No, not really, not for a set that's this age. However, if you factor in another common problem, which I've shown on our website and I've done other videos about, this late series of IMA 3303s do tend to have problems with the amplifier circuits and it comes down to, um, in my opinion, poor quality components that were used in the amplifier circuits. And we do a lot of repairs on those types of problems where uh, if you've looked at the website, you've seen examples, pictures of amplifier circuits where components are thoroughly burnt up and it was a total failure and the output transistors have failed. And that's a pretty dramatic case. In this case, perhaps this IMA3303 was in the very beginning stages of an amplifier failure. The pictures on the website that show the sets with burnt up components, those would be in the final stages of failure. On a one to 10 scale, the pictures would be an 11. This set could possibly be a two or a three where it's just started to have problems and Andrea was more aware of, of problems and it was a pretty obvious problem when the set's turning on and off on its own. So what I did was I went through and I rebuilt the power supply completely. Uh, I re also replaced components in the amplifier circuit. They're the components that typically fail on this series of IMA 3303s. I did some work on the intercom control circuits because that is typically a problem on these sets also. And since this one's already here, we might as well take care of it all while we're at it. Here's what we have. Here are the components that were changed in her set. And as you can see, it's a lot more than just a couple diodes. So these are all the components I've replaced in Andrea's IMA3303. This is a good example of how a problem may seem obvious in the beginning, but as you get deeper into the set, you'll find that it your troubleshooting takes you down a different path. And once you find the fundamental problem, in this case, with the power supply, all of the power supply components should be replaced along with the other components in other circuits that you know to be a problem in the future. I'm sure that she doesn't want to have to send this set back into us again in 18 months or two years when her amplifier blows up. So now is the time to take care of it. So this is a good example of why you shouldn't wait when you notice a problem with your intercom system. When it starts to develop a problem, that's the time to address the problem and have it repaired. I talked to a fellow today, he has an IMA 4406 that is doing the same thing that hers is do was doing. It shows in his case IU on the display, which I've done a lot of videos about. And when I asked him how long it's been like that, he said it's probably been two or three years. And he's noticed that now 
the front of the unit when he puts his hand on it has gotten very warm and it's warm all the time. I can almost guarantee you that his repair is going to be much more involved than if he had called me three or four months after the problem first started or perhaps even a week or two after the problem started uh, because it has sat there in a failed condition and cooked itself over the last two or three years so there's bound to be a lot more to repair. I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like it with the like button on our YouTube, which is down there at the bottom of the YouTube page. Also, if you think our videos would help other people, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribing to our channel raises our search rankings and more people will find your videos and we'll be able to help them also. So that's all for today. See you on the next video.